I have been thinking about how black blockchain is going to be quite important in the shift of the monetary system that is fiat based more towards commodities. Especially when it comes to the new financial system that are based on commodities, I think blockchain is going to play an important role in monitoring and or limiting the rehypothecation of financial assets. What is rehypothecation? Rehypothecation is basically using financial assets, it could be gold that have been used as collateral to issue credit and the same collateral for example a kilogram of gold may have been used to issue credit to people multiple times uh, which may exceed the where the value of credit itself uh, can exceed the value of one kilogram of gold by multiples so the issue here is that when there's that default Rehypothecation ensures that there's not enough gold to cover for all the losses. So to, in order to eliminate or control the risk of rehypothecation, I think this is where blockchain is uh, going to play its part in the new uh, financial system that is backed by commodities. And the new financial system here is, to be more specific, more likely to be currency for trade settlement rather than currency as medium of exchange. So currency as a medium of exchange is, in this context, we are using, say, Saudi Arabia and India as examples. India wants to buy a barrel of oil from Saudi Arabia at, say, 90 US dollar per barrel. So typically what happens is that India has to sell its rupees to buy US dollar and that US dollar that India received is then used to buy Saudi oil from Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia received uh, US dollar from India and is, uh, Saudi Arabia will then have to sell US dollar to buy Saudi Rial to be used locally within Saudi Arabia. So that's what we mean by, by medium of, of exchange for the US dollar. So in this context, US dollar is the medium of exchange between Saudi Arabia and India. Whereas uh, a currency as trade settlement is slightly different. In the conventional context, it's like, for example, again, we are using Saudi Arabia and India. Let's say that uh, Saudi Arabia has a trade surplus with India. That means that Saudi Arabia exports more to India than importing goods from India. What this means is that Saudi Arabia starts accumulating US dollar reserves. These reserves are referred to as trade settlement. And uh, what happens in the past is that Saudi Arabia will use these US dollars to buy treasuries. So treasuries can be seen as another medium of trade settlement. In a multipolar world where countries are de-dollarizing, what this means is that the trade settlement is gradually moving away from predominantly uh, US treasuries. And the new form of trade sub settlement, many uh, people in the precious metal sectors, even in the financial sectors, are predicting it to be on a basket of commodities, most likely uh, gold will be sharing a significant weighting for that trade settlement. So what this means is that, like again, if we are using Saudi Arabia as an example, uh, where it has a trade surplus with India, the excess US dollars that Saudi Arabia has will be then be used to buy gold. So gold will be the trade settlement, not medium of exchange, but trade settlement. However, in practical commercial terms, a country typically has uh, multiple trade surpluses and trade deficits uh, with a couple of other trade partners. So Saudi Arabia, for example, could have a trade surplus with India, but could have a trade, uh, trade deficit with uh, Russia or China. So uh, then if you're using gold as trade settlement, 
it means that gold has to be moved around between different countries as uh, there are many multiple trade surpluses and trade deficits and the logistics and costs of moving gold around from uh, India to Saudi Arabia to Russia to China this is uh, pretty expensive to just move gold around of course there are security issues as well with transporting gold you need quite a lot of security so this is where blockchain comes into play to minimize the cost of transporting gold between different countries when settling trade blockchain technology can trace the change of ownership of the physical gold itself without having to constantly moving gold from one country to another to settle trade differences basically for blockchain you can uh, one can consider it as a, an accounting system to monitor the change in ownership of the physical gold itself and uh, drastically reducing the cost and the need of having to transport gold around constantly all the time uh, if used correctly would be able to trace whether there are multiple ownerships uh, on the gold at the same time time which is rehypothecation so uh, in practice yeah, if practiced properly blockchain would be able to monitor or eliminate the use of rehypothecated gold and silver one of the important physical infrastructure for enabling the dissemination of blockchain uh, technology worldwide is subsea communication cables this is where the geopolitics of subsea communication cables become really important in ensuring the viability of blockchain ledger in gold-backed uh, trade settlement currency. So for any one of my uh, listeners who are more interested in the technical details on gold-backed uh, trade settlement currency, I would advise either to follow Alastair McLeod from Gold Money, Vince Lanchi from Gold Fix and Jim Ricards. They're pretty good and the, the links to their channels are in the description in this video. There's an interesting development very recently where the gold price in Shanghai and the gold price in Comex uh, has a price differential of roughly 100 US dollar where the price of gold in Shanghai is higher than in Comex. A price differential of 100 US dollar is in the form of an ounce of gold. This price differential has been sustaining longer than usual, which shouldn't be the case in the global integrated supply chain. Vince Lancy from Goldfish has also observed that this price premium or the price differential between Shanghai and Comex is growing, not decreasing over time. In the past, this kind of price differential would have gone away very quickly in the global globally integrated supply chain. That's because traders make money out of price arbitrage, whereby they are actually buying the gold of COMEX at a lower price to be sold at an exchange that offers the gold at a higher price. The price difference, the price difference between these two exchanges is where the traders make money. So as you buy gold from the price from an exchange with lower price, it pushes the spot price of that commodity, in this case gold, it pushes the price up where, and it, the traders are then selling it to the exchanges, in this case Shanghai, which when you sell uh, in supply and demand dynamics, when you sell gold to Shanghai, it should reduce the price of gold uh, advertised in Shanghai. So over that period of time when traders are doing the price arbitraging, eventually the price indicated in COMEX and Shanghai should converge, but they are not doing that right now. In fact, the price difference between COMEX and Shanghai is increasing. Is this a sign that the US government is limiting the supply of gold into international markets, leaving the United States. Why would the United States uh, want to start hoarding precious metals? Is it because they are preparing for the future whereby precious metals will be important part of the monetary system 
whereby trade settlement has to be resolved in commodities like gold back blockchain. If you find this video informative, please click like and do subscribe to my channel. Feel free to disseminate uh, this video to the network whom you think would benefit from this message. That's it for today. Bye-bye.